Oh, yeah. Mmm. 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 Oh, yeah. Dude, I love those sounds that um come out of your body. That kind of like, oh, you know, if you see like a, sometime I was sitting on a bench somewhere and I think I was at a um outlet mall. And if you've never been to an outlet mall, it's basically where people, really people that love each other unconditionally go to kind of waste money on shit that doesn't fit. You know, you'll see somebody with like a, um, you know, you'll see somebody with a one shoe that they, it's like a size 10 and the other one's a nine, but they don't, you know, they're not really, they don't care that much, I guess, or they just, they're willing to deal with it for the price at $6, you know, you'll see somebody with a neck brace that says S day Lauder on it. just. You know, people want things that have just big insignias on it. You know, for $4, you'll pay somebody just to damn paint Levi's down your arm. Or to, um, you know, you'll get, uh, for 50 cents, Baskin Robbins will give you ice cream and they just scoop it right into your hand. You know, they just, it's a, like a halfway house for um, capitalism, basically. You know, you'll see a damn uh, Lacoste shirt over in the distance, over in the, you know, in the parking lot shooting up in the car by himself. He's over there just dousing up. So, yeah, I don't even know what I was going to tell you guys, but I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here with you and I'm happy that I'm not at an outlet mall right now. You know, I, when I was a child, we liked hitting that outlet mall. You're on your way to the beach. You got $17 burning a hole in your pocket. And you want about 30 items. You could get a shirt that's made out of all collars. There's no, you know, they messed up in China or somewhere. And they just, damn, it's just full. It have collars on the arm. So your, your neck has a collar and both arms have a collar. You're like, damn, that's. This is a real professional shirt. You know, you just, that's the kind of stuff you see. You'll get a baby diaper there, it sorts coins. And they'll give you that for 58 cents, 67 cents, 77 cents. It's just that kind of shit, you know. You can get a soda for, for 60 cents, but there's no cup involved. They just pour it into your mouth. Drink as much as you can. You know, have a store say unlimited beverages. We'll douse you up. We'll douse your daddy up. Yeah, it's a lot of sunburnt people. Um, a lot of non-Bitcoin owning type of people, I feel like. Just regular people. You know, a lot of people that have been involved in domestic disputes, but, are in, but now they're going to the beach. And on the way there... They stop and uh and get a little dose of that come up, you know that. And I'll say this, man. No shade to Britain. I know you guys sending um whatever his name is, little Marky or whatever that guy's name is, uh Prince Harold. Y'all sending his little ass over here with his trifling lady. And we sent her over there, y'all send him back. You know? Apparently, the current, the import-export business is just, just, we're just all just sharing a bunch of fucktards, you know it. And, uh, and I'll say this, man, a biscuit will beat the hell out of a scone. And you could put that on your great-granddaddy's damn doorstep, dude, unless y'all sold his home after he died. No shade, baby. Let's come up, baby. Gang. This is Eddie 9V with the come up, and that's 9 volt. I'm on a come up. Yeah. Feels real good after I've been 
89 volt filling me filling me man filling my cornea copia remember that deal they taught you about it back in elementary they taught you that cornea copia man it was a damn little I don't know what the hell it was get a basket you know it was just a damn it didn't you know, it was just a greedy, it, uh, it looked like a damn oyster's little side piece or something. I don't know what it was, man. The cornucopias, and they fucking, they stuffed them with carrots and all kind of shit. And it just, it was too much to, I, I couldn't handle I didn't know what was going on. It looked like a, it looked like a seashell, like a damn gay seashell or something. Or a sexually curious, you know? Or bit curious, they call it. It looked like a bit curious seashell trying to have a salad or something at one time. And that was cornucopias, man. Um, I'm gonna come up. That's 89 Volt. God, it's a good tune, isn't it? And thank you guys for being here today. Uh, we are here. And that is the choice that we made, and I'm grateful for it. What's going on, man? A lot of little deals. You know, you had the Floyd Merriweather and um, uh, Paul, uh, Paul, Logan Paul went at it, and it really it kind of had a, a um, I mean, Logan Paul come in, he came in hella German on that fight when you're looking at him. Real Swedish, very Viking, very like, damn. This fellow owns an axe type of look. You know, and uh, I don't know. You know, I don't know if I like watching. I, do I want to see millionaires fight each other? I, only, I want the underdog in there, I feel like. And I guess, you know, Floyd has accusings of wife of, uh, you know, you know, he's beat 50, 50, he's 50, you know, seven of his wins came against ex-wives. Allegedly. And so, you know, maybe that's what you want to see. I don't know. I was just wondering what made me want to, you know, I was on the airplane and I, 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 I there's no streaming on there. So you have to just guess what's happening, which is, you know, it's like the old days, really. You know, it used to be like, what happened? Somebody would tell you they described it. No, oh, it was like, and then, they, and, then, and then the guy, and then, no, he couldn't even, I don't know, man. It's unbelievable. 
It's on my way, my ball. But then it's, you know, it just gets different, you know, and now it's like there's just so much. You get so many of the recaps and stuff. But I'm on this plane. I'm trying to get the thing to uh, stream. It wouldn't. But about every 55 seconds, it would give me a um, glimpse. Just a JPEG, just a bam. And uh, yeah, and so, I, you know, I had no idea what was happening. It looked kind of like a couple of square dances. It looked like a couple of young men that had met somewhere and was doing drugs and, you know, probably at a men's club, a nightclub called Splash or Fade or uh, Joy. A lot of, usually the gay club in town has that, you know, kind of like, um, it's never like Care Bear Ernie's tug it out boys shop or something it, you know I, I sometimes wish they would go with a more vibrant name a lot of gay men night uh you know drinking holes water holes bars but they don't you know they they just kind of it's always like vibe or uh glisten glisten is kind of a dicey when i feel like this i don't know what that's that they're doing in there but yeah we had i'm trying to think spray was one you're like that's that's that seemed like a tough bit oh but yeah i tried to watch on the airplane i couldn't do it i could not get that thing to uh to load up into function um and so I just got a glimpse every now and then. But that's what the one thing that's interesting. The old days, you know, I feel like that's how storytelling really found its. That's why storytelling had some value. It had some limbs on it. You know, it had some legs. Because you had to tell a story. What happened to Ronnie? You know, oh, you know. Ronnie got uh, Ronnie got his ears pierced, man. You're like, damn, really? He's a, f you know, he's a father of four, and he's in his seventies. And the people are like, yeah, well, you know, he likes boy bands. You know, he got the, they caught him in his truck crying in his truck with a O Town poster, and then, and then he got him pierced. So, um. But yeah, just you had to tell a story. Everybody had to. Well, what happened? Somebody, uh, uh. You know, they remember Paul Revere's, that fellow. You know, the original drunk driver, that dude's out there just rolling across the Central East, just screaming, yelling. You know, just... But you had to hear, you know, people used to have to tell the story. There was a value to somebody coming into town. Well, tell me what happened. Oh, you were there. Tell, share it with me. It was different before we had all this mass communication. We all had such a value, I feel like. Because the story of the world and the story of existence it was all, it needed all of us. And we still have it. We still iterate it. But there's not that moment-to-moment -moment value in everyone where you're like, oh, tell me what happened. Oh, you got, oh, you're not, man, y'all aren't going to believe what. It's just, you know, now with so much videography, it's just a different time. Um but I don't know why I, t I don't know why I said that. I guess I was just kind of thinking a little bit, you know, what's going on? I got a smoothie. Um, I'm back out here in the Central East. You know, when I got me a smoothie, and oh, I took that first sip, and it's one of the healthy ones, man. And it, uh, God, it just. I wanted it. I want it. It's a little too healthy, 
you know? It kind of tastes like I'm just, like I stuck a thing into a plant and I'm just sucking that big bitch off. Like I'm just, just giving a, just really just giving that freaking, that little baby Hummer to a, to a plant, you know, like I'm just damn taking down a damn uh, begonia or something, face first, you know, I'm just doing oral on a begonia, this thing's just heavy, I mean, it may have dirt in it, I have, that's the thing, you go to some of the smootheries and it's too healthy, it's too, it's just like, come on, they just go too far with it. You know, it's just too much. They, you just like some of it's just too healthy, man. Right? You know, you know they have potting soil in it. They'll have semen from uh, Slovenia in it. You're like, what? You're just like, damn, man. Was, you got the kind of shit to make you suck off a bag of carrots after you have it. You know, it's just some of it's just getting too healthy. I miss the original smoothies. That thing was mostly sugar, dude. And then they'd hit you with two scoops of uh, protein powder. And they'd have like the one dude in town. He was like, oh, I work at GNC. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. I'm eating, I'm eating meat right now in my head. He would record himself eating meat with a video and then just play it back while he was eating, while he was also eating meat later. You know, he'd have sound, at night. He would sleep next to an audio of him, just sounds of him eating meat. Just, Damn, this guy's got bacon brain, man. What else is going on? I went home to uh, Louisiana. You know, and it was uh, 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 un uh, un uh, un unjoyous circumstances. Really, man, I had a childhood friend that passed away. You know, and he died of drugs and doing drugs and. You know, it's kind of uh, it's kind of wild when that happens, uh, and I know it's happening for a lot of people out there. A lot of people struggling, and a lot of people's friends and family struggling. And you know, I believe that there's some people that suffer from addiction, and then there's some people who are somehow victims of you know these large pharmaceutical corporations, and they're just throwing pills and everything. You know, you go to Starbucks and get a muffin and, you know, you could get a damn, they'll do blueberry Zan bar in there. You're like, what? It'll be pineapples and Soma. Like, what? That's a mix. That's a mixture now. This muffin brought to you by damn uh, uh, Monteverdi or whatever those big companies, it's Monsanto. Like, geez, I don't know. Should I eat this? And you eat it. You're just used to it, you know? You're out there fucking <laughs> knobbing on a couple Monsanto muffins, dude. Now your mustache won't grow. You don't know what's going on. Your tongue smells like soybeans. Anyway, man, yeah, I, just, I, had, I had to go home. This buddy Will was a friend of mine, and he passed, you know? And it was just interesting, man, you know, um... You know, it was a lot of things. It was a lot of people I hadn't seen in a long time. And some of you may know, you know, I spoke over the years about this gentleman. And he and I, you know, uh, we were friends when we were young. When there was not a lot of people in our town. And, you know, back when you could still hear the train come through. And back when if somebody was on the train, it was a, you know, a decent person. Now the train pulls up, dude. It's, it's a bunch of just damn, you know, anybody could be on there now. It's mostly robbers only now on the train. You, let me put these shades back on. I like them sometimes, you know. It's almost like I'm in mourning a little. And, um... You know, you may, this fellow, this fellow I grew up with, I, there was a time in our town when somebody got a hot tub. And people had never said, couldn't imagine, what, 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 what is it? Somebody's like, it's like a little ocean in your yard. And it's, 
you know, you put a damn, you know, it's like warm. It's like a little damn soup. And so people were fired up, you know, and, and opening night, I didn't get to go to opening night at it. There was more adults going there and seeing it and drinking wine by it. And, you know, people would press a button and turn it on. And then turn it off. Like, oh, it's, you know, look at it. Oh, it's, you know, God, that boy, it's great. You know, people bobbing for apples in it, you know, drinking. And then maybe your buddy's wife's over there bobbing and nobody's looking. And you go touch her ass a little or something. Or play crack hand or something for a second with her. You know, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what the neighborhood was like. I didn't go to opening night. But the next day, they let the children get in it. You know, and I was a child, and so I got in there. And, and you know, we're all in there, and we were children, man. There was as many, as many kids as you could fit into a damn little hot tub. And this, I think this, fella, this thing probably seated seven. I don't know. When you're a kid, everything seats seven, 70, 700. You know, you're children, so it doesn't matter if there's people next to you or on you or whatever. You know, little Lawrence will be in there, and he'll be wearing little freaking Anthony as a scarf, and they got nine other kids. You know, they got twins in there, and somebody goes in and comes out as triplets. It doesn't, who knows? It's just being children that was just, you know, the the connective energy amongst children is... It's not as, it's very strong. You know, as we, when we get it, as we become adults, I find I, bec I become more of a proton or a neutron. But when you're young, you're just part of the electricity. So anyway, we had a bunch of children in there and, and we'd never been in a hot tub. People didn't know, you know, people drinking the water and doing all, you know, washing their hair and. One kid, you know, his dad come over and baptize him on the side. And people just living. And one fella brought a fish. It died immediately because of the heat. But people didn't know. We didn't know. We weren't enjoying it. And the directions got all wet immediately. So nobody knew what they said. And we were just hot tubbing and pretending we were in fans. Somebody wrote Tahiti on the on a sign and nailed it to the tree right there and God, we were living it up. And there was one fella named CJ. And he was older than us. He was probably, he could have been 15. He could have been 60. You know, he had us. He had scars on his back. I don't know, he might have been a slave. You know, he's a white guy. But he might have been enslaved at one point. I don't know, he'd been through a lot. You know, he'd been through a lot. And I remember he had hair kind of around the top of his pants on the back. And uh, so anyway, we're all in the hot tub. We're enjoying it. And we're probably maybe 10 or 12. I don't know, 11. And big CJ been under the water. He'd been touching his body. You know, and he'd been prepping his body to really eat Jack out. And spray, you know, and really just bust full, you know. And I'm not a pedophile or anything. I'm just telling you a story from my childhood. So, you know, I was there and I was a child and when it, when this happened. And anyway, so he he's prepping his body underwater. The rest of us don't know. We're doing backstrokes, you know. We're doing uh, one guy's filling his mouth with water, shooting it in the air. Somebody else is catching it. You know, people just having a good time. It's like a little Las Vegas out there. It's like our own little uh, Bar uh, Bellagio. You know, we're doing it all. And CJ been prepping his body to bust out. Well, at one point, he stands up in the hot tub and ejects out into the water. And we'd never seen it. We're like, what? We'd never seen, you know, I think I'd only ever even seen anybody else's penis. That was probably my brother. I'd seen my own penis in a mirror, but that's just your, you know, that's still your penis. It's not. You know, it's still yours. It's just one. And then I'd seen some other kid's penis through like a fire. He was on the other side of a fire and I was on one side. But, um, yeah, this kid stood up and he knew about it. And he, so he, you know, he's ejacking out into the pond or whatever. And, uh, and my buddy Will was right there. 
and Will was a sweet guy, man. And he just he he thought something was happening to this kid, to this CJ boy. He thought he was dying. I guess, you know, he thought, well, if this, you know, if he pumps out another twenty or thirty servings, he's gonna, you know, each time he gets gonna get it smaller and smaller. He's disappearing, you know. And I could see in that moment how that all registered. It was like, oh my gosh, this guy's, you know, this guy's. uh Eventually, his whole body will shoot out of the end of his wiener. So we didn't know what to do, man. So Will grabbed it. Will grabbed it to really stop it off at the end like a hose, you know, like where you bend a hose like that. And the fella punched him, man. Fella unloaded unloaded on him. So, and that was a lot, man. That was a lot for one moment in time because we'd never, I'd never seen any of that. I'd never... You know, to see such, you know, a moment of kind of sexual advancement at that and experience that and then also see a saving, you know, this real saving grace, this real, this two-handed angel, you know, come in and try to save this boy's life to keep his body inside of his body, to keep him from just dripping out his existence into the world and then to see the the abuse at the end. And, you know, that's kids, man. And that's kids, brother. But, uh, but God, man. God, life is... Uh, there's a lot of gravel on the road, isn't there? And, Will, we love you, man. And I just want to let you know that you are loved, brother. And, uh... And you'll be missed, man. You were always, you were always up for the up for the up for a good time, man. I feel like you were always, and not just any time. You were always pretty positive, man, and hopeful, and uh, and you'll be missed. Um, I gotta let you know we got tour dates. We're adding shows coming up. Those will go on sale, I believe, next Tuesday, and we are adding shows in Cincinnati, Durham, Chattanooga, Knoxville. Minneapolis, Charleston, and Columbus. So just letting you know now, you can follow that information through Instagram and through the podcast as well. As well, currently we have shows in St. Louis, Cincinnati, Charlotte, Durham, North Carolina over there where my mother uh, attended college, Chattanooga, uh, where my mother lived actually on a mountain or on a hill over there before they had a fallen out, Knoxville, Tennessee, um, Wilmington, Delaware, Wilkes Byre, Minneapolis, finally getting back over there to Prince's hometown, Charleston, South Carolina, where I uh, went to college for one semester, and and I used to work at Frozen Options over there, where they had good smoothies and and dirty, uh, where we didn't fully clean out the only tanning bed in town. And people got dysentery and um, pink eye out of there. Because some fella butted out in there one night, came in there high on, you know, after a night of doing cocaine and desecrated the thing with his butt or whatever, and we didn't clean it very well. Richmond, Baltimore, Albany, we will be there. Uh, all the dates and all the tickets should be bought through theovon.com slash tour. That's where you have to get these things because other places are, it's ridiculous links. Young lady sent me a thing the other day. Fuck you, buddy. Fuck you. I'm trying to take Arnold, and I guess that's her husband or whatever. I don't know. I'm trying to take Arnold to see you. And each ticket's 260 bucks. You f and, and then she called me the N-word, which is fine. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind being called it once in a while, but... I, you know, I, it just was like, I don't know. I guess, I, I mean, I was re I'm always ready for it, but I just wasn't, you know, this seemed egregious. But anyway, and I wrote back, I said, well, just get you a ticket from a regular locale, woman. Get you a ticket from a decent locale. Because you're shopping in decently on random links. That's why all the links through theovon.com slash tour take you to appropriately priced tickets everything else is that's cat ass baby that's cat ass and i don't mess with cat ass man i also don't mess with paying too much for insurance you know i'm redoing the insurance on my home right now 
and I'm excited about that. And my azaleas are doing good. And I want to thank producer Sean, who goes the extra mile sometimes when I'm out of town and and help me get the azaleas well, keep them well, and those bitches are doing well. And I'm grateful to be alive, man. And I'll tell you this story. So the other night I go for a swim, you know, and I go for a swim and um, and I'd had me a little bit of blue chew. I was testing them out. You know, I was testing them out because, and look, I'll be honest with you. I gave a fellow one after a show one time. He said he was going home with his wife. It was their sixth anniversary or something. I said, well, you got on this, you know, year six, you got to get back in there. You know, you got to, you got to do a little bit of uh, troweling. You know what I'm saying? You got to torque out, big dog. You know what I'm saying? When she asks where you are, you say, I'm up. Stay. And she'll know. Don't be all, don't, you know. You could downstairs for years, kind of two through four, but on year six, you got to get back upstairs. Papa. Blue Chew is making waves and bringing more confidence to the bedroom by offering chewable tablets that can help men get stronger and longer lasting erections. Now, sometimes you got to thorn up. You know, sometimes you got to thorn up on somebody. You know, and a lot of men will do that, 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 they'll put a glove on their wiener, say, hey, shake my hand. The lady realizes, oh, dang, that's a wiener and a glove. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations. Hey, uh, you know, um, I was, uh, 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 bah. Yeah, none of that, man. I remember I went to a dang guy one time and they had to do injections into my penis to make sure it worked. No waiting in line at the pharmacy and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days, within days. That's the best part. It's all done online. That's true. You could benefit from extra confidence. It's time to perform. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. These things do work. Here's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Theo at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. Promo code Theo to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. You know, I've been struggling recently also with staying active and staying mobile. And my body gets tight, and sometimes I just need a damn strong-handed woman. I need a big German to get on there, you know, or a big Slovak, baby, you know, or a big Urban, just to really just douse my muscles out with their strong manos. That's hands. And when I get limbered up, then I can really take care of myself workout-wise. That's right. What I want to tell you right now is Peloton. Yep. Peloton, world-class instructors, curated music, endless variety. Peloton has created an unmatched fitness experience that keeps you motivated workout after workout. Yep, that's right. Peloton gives you that, that, that vitriol, that salute, that, pa- that and when you know when you are doing Peloton that you are doing the best. That's right. Whether you're looking for some extra encouragement, structured workouts, or just in the mood to laugh, their instructors are there to bring out your best during each class. You know, I've had instructors, they don't do nothing over there. Some girl over there, over, over there took her temperature the whole time and then said she, you know, was ovulating or whatever, and she had to go home to her husband. Like, what? Bitch, I'm here to do curls, bitch. So things change. With epic artist collaborations and an instructor-curated playlist, their music experience is unlike any other. Whether you're in the mood for some hip-hop, pop, or country, the Peloton bike has the right music to keep you entertained and motivated all year long. Peloton also offers their all-access membership. It's more like a family plan for no additional cost. That's right, no extra. So if you got little uh, Larissa or little uh, little Tiffany wants to do something, do a damn leg up or something or a damn uh, 
you know, a couple tilt-to-whirl sets or something. Now that beautiful bra can stay fit as well for no extra cost. Bring home the Peloton experience for your whole family with access to their entire class library. Yep, classes for every level. From beginner programs to Tabata intervals, Peloton meets you at every step in your fitness journey. Get started on your Peloton journey. Go to OnePeloton.com to learn more. That's O-N-E-P-E-L-O-T-O-N dot C-O-M. The name you can trust. You know, I saw, I want to thank everyone for hitting the hotline, 985-664-9503, and for submitting unique videos and things to discuss here. And there's a website here, uh, someone sent a video in of a woman uh, who found a stranger living in her house. Okay, backstory, I live alone in a house. I have a house to myself. Nobody lives here. Nobody lives here. Okay, there's a woman in her bathroom talking about being lonesome and uh, that no one lives at her home. And this woman seems, I don't want to say vegan, but definitely, uh, you know, kind of lady that kind of uh, starts to, some people, if they get too vegan or out there, they'll start to look like Christmas trees. They have a lot of ornaments and knickknackery on them. My friends come over occasionally. Houses. Nobody uses my shower, okay? Nobody. First of all, every time I'm home, I hear the weirdest noises. Weird shit happens all the time that's like unexplainable. And I just like brush it off because I'm like, whatever. But this is my final straw. I literally. I'm like freaking out right now. I came home wanting to take a shower. Just got off work. All I wanted to do was take a shower. Open my shower curtain. Someone lives in my house that has brown hair. My hair is fucking pink. And there you go. At the end, she realizes based on hair color that somebody, and you you can't see on the video, they pan down and there's an eyebrow or something in the tub. And to me, this seemed like it's a, uh, who is the lady? Uh, Mar- no. Um, it could be a damn um, a little mercantile. What's that lady's name? A uh, little. Um, uh, uh, her name, she's like. Uh, I, 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 uh, oh, uh, Missy. Uh, no, a little. Let me see. Highest grossing female rappers. Nicki Minaj. I feel like it looked like Nicki Minaj was in there and lost a damn eyebrow or something. But she said it's a man's hair. I, it sounded like that. It, but this lady also may not even. She seemed like a real. Uh, I don't know. I mean, she'd find a damn eyebrow in the tub. But she said she's been we- hearing weird stuff. This is the final straw. Like if you like. If there's like a, you know, somebody been making muffins and they left a bowl, you know, a mu- um, muffin stuff, you know, stuffing duh, out on your counter, then you got to call the police. I mean, you can't, you can't be like, hmm, what is this? Huh? I mean, what is there somebody making muffins? Am I sleep muffining? Like she said, this is the final straw. The final, I, I, whether I, I just wonder what some of the other straws were. You know, I wonder what some of the other straws were where you finally found a piece of mustache in the tub. And now the guy's obviously changed his, you, you know, whatever intel you had on him earlier. This guy shaved his hair. This guy's changing the game up. You know, he could have dyed his skin. You know, you could be looking for somebody who's jaundiced next month. I mean, who knows? But I think one way to do it, here's how I would do it. Because obviously this dude does drugs or whatever. And if you're willing to hide in somebody's house, if you're willing to be out there just straight Goldie locking, or male Goldie locking, I mean, that's the, the, here's what I would do. I would stand against the wall, young lady, and I would just start counting. I would put my hands on my face. I'd be like, one, two, and 
I think maybe it'll then they'll, then maybe they'll think it's a game. Or maybe just stand in the living room like, you know what? I can't find you. I can't find you. I don't know. How do you? But it's crazy. Put a little trap out. You know, here's a way to find out if the man is thinking of anything sexual. If it's a rapist or not. Get your little mouse trap. Put a little condom on it. And if he... You know, if you hear that thing pop off at night, you know, A, you caught him, and B, he's a rapist, baby, so. But I wish you well. It's sad to see that men are now the Goldilocks in America. You know, you got this lady out here kind of got that T-Pain vibe, and you got men out here Goldilocking. But that's God's plan, baby, and that's where we are. Praise God, baby. And thank you, guys. I found that one out there, that video. We've got some other ones that came in from uh, from our listeners. I want to thank you guys for hitting the hotline, as always. Um, I'm getting excited about this tour. Uh, I'm going to figure that out. I'm also I'm going to take a I'm going to take a, a little bit of time and go to a look do a little bit of like a retreat and do some um, just deal with some try and deal with some stuff I've been dealing with. You know, over the past year, uh, I've talked about it, maybe a year and a half even, I've just really been dealing with some anger issues. You know, and I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, um, but it's affected a lot of the way that I communicate and that I feel. Um, and it's affected the amount of joy and stuff that I'm having in my life. And so I want to be a little bit more uh, proactive. And so I'm going to just see about maybe 10 days or something, you know. And it's nothing where they're electrocuting you or something. You know, it's nothing where they're beating you or anything or I'm a people or anything. It's real. I think it's just going to be an organized thing where you can kind of focus uh, And so that's what, that's what I'm excited about. I'm, I'm trying to stay excited. You know, I literally have to commit to a to to a spot when I get off of the podcast today, and so I'm a little scared, I guess. Uh, I think my my biggest thing is, do I really want to feel better? Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's like, do I really want to feel better? And I'm not saying that as a downer. I'm not trying to bring anybody down. Like this podcast isn't about bringing anybody down. But I, damn, I sometimes I just I want to. I have to be able to share what I'm thinking or feeling. Um. And yeah, you know, I'm just so hard on myself all the time. I just want to start to figure what I have to. I have to find some. You know, I want to do some excavating there and just see what's going on. And at the same time, keep moving forward, you know. My mother sometimes talks to me about, well, don't sit in the past, you know. Don't sit in the past. And some of that is super true. Uh, you know, um, but it's sometimes it's also hard to really, you know, I notice whatever things from my past are affecting me from having, like, committed relationships, Um you know, feeling okay, um, being willing to dance at weddings. I don't like doing that, honestly. I've been so scared about dancing at a wedding. Sometimes I wish that somebody will stand up during the nuptials or whatever and say and protest. So at least we won't have to dance, you know. So, yeah, I don't know. But I'm hopeful and um, and everything's fine. I'm not like in a bad place i'm actually in an okay place but i want to take us some time and just kind of see what's going on um and i have a little bit of time i have a little bit of space and so i'm thankful to god that i have this a little bit of space in my life where i can kind of investigate and then i can share with you whatever i'm seeing or thinking you know and uh and that really feels like a gift and thank you guys for your support man so many supportive people 
you know, and I want to be able to do, I want to be able to be a part of like a, some solution in the world. You know, and I don't know what that means exactly. Uh, but I think, you know, it's like, I think we're in a weird place in society where we realize maybe that all these things we're getting aren't really, they're great and they're cool and it's nice to have successes, but if we don't have a bigger feeling of success inside of ourselves or comfort, you know, it's almost like uh, it's almost like an awakening in a way where we realize, oh, there's got to be more out there than this box set of wherever or this me undies subscription, you know, or these two, you know, twelve, you know, these twenty-four inch speakers. Um. So anyway, I don't know. You know me, man. I'm always fucking hitchhiking out here inside of my own heart. So uh, gang, baby. And that's okay. That's who I am, bro. I'm a sensitive fella, man. But I'm also a bad mf -er, dog. You know what I'm saying, dude? And I'll fucking hog tie your cousin, dog. And remodel that dude's fucking lips, fam. Praise God, bro. Don't even try me, dude. I'll restack your spine, baby. Call me Jimmy Jenga, dude. And I'll give you that slip disc. Mietcha. So don't even put it past me. Uh, what else is going on? A lot of good calls that came in and, and um, a lot of great people involved with this podcast, man. And, you know, one of the things I noticed over the year, over the past year and a half is sometimes when I listen to people, I can't hear them as good. Like, I can hear them, but I used to be able to hear them and feel them. And I miss that, man. You know, I miss that. And I don't know what inside of me is making me uncomfortable, you know, or making me. But when I hear, when I see people or I hear people and somebody's talking and they're sharing something that's important to them, man, I want to be able to hear it and feel it. And, and yeah, I just, I want to be able to do that. And, and I don't know, and it's just important to me, you know, it's important to me. Um, yeah, so that's okay. You know, this is, this is a journey that I'm on and I'm grateful to be on it. You know, that's another thing. I, I do believe that my higher power has like a plan for me that's, uh, that means something. And for you too. I do believe there's a reason that we're all right here listening to this right now. Because I can feel you listening too, you know. And uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. But praise God, bro. PTL, baby, you know that, baby. Get in there. It's so funny. We were doing a show the other night, and thank you to everybody that came out there in Los Angeles the other night, man. We had a fun show. And um, this guy stands up in the back, man, and be, this fella, and uh, he's like, let's go. And people are all excited. But it's so weird. At a comedy show, there's nothing to kind of to do. It's like we're all fired up, but there's nothing to do, you know, uh, except like – sit back down and listen so it's just the weirdest dichotomy man it's a weird uh or whatever they call it di dico dichotomy yeah, dichotomy one or the other oh i got this bad smoothie damn oh oh my god oh is it who is is this a in this this thing has a real enema type feel to it um, I wash it down with some liquid death. You know that, dude. I've been watching that softball. Let's go, boy. I've been watching softball, dude. Am I a lesbian? <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been watching that S ball, baby. A lot of thicky thicks out there with them sticky sticks. You know that? Dang. 
I mean, you could see. I wish you kind of knew the menstrual cycle of the team. So you were like, oh, okay. These, these girls, they got a little grudge. They got that grudge. It would be like a grudge flow factor. Okay. You know, they showed like the moon, the moon going, whatever. You know, oh, these girls are half mooning over here. And these bitches is wolverine over here. But my God, you know, I I, I I just love watching it. I love watching the softball, man. I like seeing them thighs. I like stalking the girls on Instagrams. I like doing it all. You know, you're with your girl. She's like, what are you doing on your phone? You're like, I don't know. JMU just hit a homer. You know, you just getting in there, man. And these girls, and dude, what, one thing that's interesting too, the crowd at the softball game is you could hear all these chirpers. A lot of women out there. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot of fear, not a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of real bird on bird action. A lot of ladies that like to, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's Taco Tuesday four days a week you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying ah i'm downstairs you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying so uh yeah it's just fun to guess like who's really you know out there wallet hopping you see some of the ladies you know in the stands and they just really mm, those biscuit friskers you know what i'm saying these ladies out there they just checking wallet on a lot of these girls and but it's all beautiful, man. It's all love, you know, and happy gay pride. And it's, uh, man, I just damn love softball. And the girl Montana Fouts threw a damn uh, unlimited strikeouts or whatever it's called. Like jeepers. You know, and it's just fun. You see, they all, everybody out there, they doing it and you see in the distance, you know. Big Tiffany's in the distance and she's stunting like my daddy. You know what I'm saying? She got some, you know, she's just out there Manny Fresh and it's just really, God, it's good, man. I mean, what a, and it's just fun to watch, you know, it just, there's a lot of action in those games. There's a lot of like excitement by the ladies, whereas the guys, their show, it's a little more too cool for school a lot of time with the guys. You know, it's all tobacco and spitting and, you know, or gum or whatever. But the ladies, they're, they, they, they got the cheers and the chants and the, they're doing it all and they're touching tits. I mean, I saw two of them jump up in the air and just damn touch tits, brother. You know? Woo-woo. I don't... That much is, they'll jump start a Civic, baby, with them milk knuckles, baby. Let's go. And here's one, here's one right here. This is... Uh, thank you for sending this in. This is Naked Woman Destroys Outback. Uh, this breaks my heart, man. First of all, first of all, lady, you in here, we just got restaurants open, lady. We just got them open. And you know how hard it is to get anything imported right now. Uh-huh. And you out here at Outback, okay? You out here at the Australian, uh, what is it called? Center of uh, uh, teamwork. Um, you're out here at the Australian consulate in wherever this is, Buffalo, New York, and you can't handle yourself. This is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> Look at her. Oh. And she's naked. Look at this. You don't bring a blooming onion to a blooming onion, honey. Okay? Good Christ. Oh. And the guy asked, he said, look, this is the worst part about having to work at a corporate thing. He goes, ma'am, please. And she don't get it. She don't get it. Little Tiffany can't tighten up for one minute. 
She's out here showing that slick wallet to everybody at the dang outback. My, my favorite part, there's a woman waiting in the distance. There's a woman... <laughs> There's a woman waiting to be seated still in the foyer. She's going to stay and ride it out. She's like, you know, I drove over here. I'm going to still see if they can get me in. Ooh, ooh, and you can see a little bit of booty right there. Damn, boy. Ooh, ooh. Shorty got that back smile. Damn. Now here comes the officer, baby. Let's go. Oh yeah. Oh, this is like CSI Australia, dude. This is it. She's throwing stuff at this cop. What? And I want to apologize to Australia, man. We, you know, we better than this. Man. We better than this. She just told the cop when I'm at a club that she is treated a certain type of way. Well, bitch, this is Australia, okay? And your little woke ass about to go to sleep. He shook her. Ooh, ooh. On your stomach, do it now. He... On your stomach. On your stomach, you're going to get again. Ooh, ooh. And he, he, he freaking, he lit her up, baby. Woo That's that December 25th, baby. He gave her that freaking, that pistol Christmas, daddy. You feel me? She got tased up. You could see her just hit them kookaburro wings, dog. Whoo! That's what you get. That's what you get, ladies, when your dad doesn't, uh, you know, kind of teach you how to do stuff properly. And right there. And that's probably addiction right there as well. But shout out Australia, man. We love you guys. And, um, you know, we, that's not us. That's that bitch. And uh, we ain't her. So I, I love you guys. And I can't wait to get back over to Australia. And I'm sorry about everything with that lady. Dang, boy. He gave her that signature sampler, boy. And she broke all that dishware. We just got restaurants open. And this is what you do? I hope they spray that broad down with COVID. Here's one other that came in. Jolly B faces backlash after a customer receives deep fried towel instead of fried chicken. Philippine fast food chain Jolly B. Jolly B is facing backlash after a customer allegedly received a deep fried towel instead of its famous crispy fried chicken. You know, people say they want to eat clean. But do they really want to eat clean? That's really all I got on that. Um, what else do we got here, man? Some other nice things that came in. Let me uh, get to a question from one of you guys. And um, thank you for it. Uh, here we go. Hey, Theo, man. This is... Uh... This is Evan. I'm living out in Red Wing, Minnesota, southeast of St. Paul, Minneapolis here. Oh, yeah. Out there near near Red Wing, man. And Red Wing is definitely, uh, that's that menstrual cycle bird. You know what I'm saying, baby? We actually dip it. We actually dip into a slip one time when she's taking off. And then, you know, you, uh, you know, it's a little bit of, um, you're going to have a little bit of, uh, turbulence on the course baby when you got that heavy wing a little bit ironed out and also Evan that area where you live is uh or where you are that's where uh B uh Billy Valens died R uh Richie Valens and the big bopper they died over there in that plane crash and a lot of people don't remember that but the movie La Bamba and I hate to spoil the ending but um they died there and uh, kind of the, on the Iowa, Minnesota border around there. And I believe it's down near where you are. What else we got? Onward, Evan. Thank you. 
Minneapolis here. Right off the old mighty Mississippi River. Um, just kind of looking for some advice from me. You know, I've been seeing this girl for a few months, and uh, she took off today for basic training for the uh, for the military. She's going to be in the National Guard. And, uh, you know, I know I'm going to have some downtime. I'm going to, you know, be kind of bumming or, or whatever. Um, but, I, you know, I go fishing a lot. Maybe that might be my way to kind of unwind and get my mind off things. But I was just kind of looking like what you've done, maybe if it's been like a long-distance relationship or just knowing you're going to be away from someone you care about for a long time, how you kind of dealt with that. Because, uh, you know, it's only three months and it'll end, you know. It's not that bad. But uh, there's no way for me to communicate with her but letters. You know, you can't talk to him on the cell phone or nothing. But uh, I was just kind of reaching out to you, man, looking for uh, for kind of your wisdom or your advice on the topic if you have any experience. Well, thank you, man. You know, I've long cheated on every woman I've ever dated and been a, you know, been a real dirt diver over there. You know, I'll run across the yard to smell something. That's the kind of animal I am. Uh but um, but I have had some moments when I was in love, also where I behaved as a as a as a lover, you know. I mean, and you can be two things, you know. You can be someone who's loving and caring. You can also be at the same time someone who has an a you know an affliction and really gives in to those dark arts of touch and titty, you know, of reaching for that third tot when your lady's already got two, you know. Or reaching for that second handrail when your man's already weaned up. And, um, and you know, I used to do some nice things, man. I remember I gave this girl a nice box of, like, candies and different things. Like, you know, kind of like, I don't remember. Like, I do remember, but I'm just ashamed to say I made, like, a nice box. It had, like, all these, like, little fires in it and, like... It was like, you know, I, I got the hots for you. And it had some red hots in that bitch and a little fire engine. A little Clifford the dog, a little Tickle Me Alma. You know, it had a, a gauze kit for like a burn victim type of thing in there. Had some uh, aloe vera in there, everything. You know, picture of a skin graft surgery or something that I printed. Back when the printer ink, it was like, you know, you got, you picked, you printed one thing and you had to go get get a new ink and your dad was pissed and your stepdad was also pissed dude and he wasn't even really your stepdad he was a man letting you live at his home um but uh i think do be sweet you know it's funny because i was just talking in the beginning now about how there's no connection there's no ability to be a storyteller this is a chance for you to be that you know whether this relationship works out or not which i hope it does and thank your lady for her service but this is a chance for you to i don't know explore how you feel about when she is gone you know how you make me feel like this you know or this is some things i think about and also try to have some respect for yourself and not overdo it you know you don't need to write every day that's too much a responsibility you know um but it sounds like you guys have a pretty good foundation. You don't sound really concerned about that. You just sound uh, like you're just thinking about how to handle it. And what I've done, man, is, yeah, just done some nice things, try to do some thoughtful things. Um, you know, try to, like, include sometimes her family or something and, you know, make, like, a nice little deal for her, send it. Uh, yeah, it's a different time now. We're the Goldilocks. You know, a lot of men are at home. And women out there doing electricity and doing, you know, working at the blood bank or whatever. So, but I just think it's nice that you even care, bro. That's nice. A lot of people be like, damn, I hope they send this girl to fight in Iraq because I'm ready for a break, you know. So, I think it's beautiful to, to, for us to take that moment to see that you care, Evan, and... um. And yeah, I think it's this is also a good opportunity for you to do some things you want to do that you don't have that time when you have that 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 immediate constant day to day connection. You know, it's hard to get your hands dirty if you got to high five somebody every day with a clean hand. So this is a chance for you to maybe do something new, learn how to do a cheese or something a Gruyere. 
you know, learn how to prove alone, you feel me, by yourself. Um, you know, you can learn how to bake or learn how to shuffle or learn how to do magic. A lot of shit you could do. Praise God, baby. Good luck over there, man. I think you got it. I think you can do just fine, man. Um, but don't just take care of her. Also take care of you. What else we got? Here we go. Kevin from Houston. Hey, Theo. It's Kevin uh, from Houston, Texas. I wanted to let you know about a, uh encounter I had with a fellow this past weekend enthusiast. Uh, so I'm a pest technician, and my last stop of the day, it was pouring rain in Houston. Um, I really didn't want to do it. I could have called called out and, and not done it because of the rain, but I thought, you know, let me just see what this guy's problem is. You know, I want to take care of it if he, if he needs me to take care of it sooner. I like that. You know, there's, I went to a restaurant the other day. They said they can't even find any workers right now at the restaurant. That people don't even want to work. So anybody that's doing a job, man, I commend you. Thanks, Kevin. Onward. Um... So I got there, started talking to him about his, his, his uh, pest problems or whatnot, and I looked down. And we got a lot of pest problems, and it sounds like the dude had one of the ultimate pests, baby, Theo Vaughn gang. And what do I see but a Theo Vaughn Dark Arts Tour shirt? And I stopped mid because it doesn't matter what I was saying before. I was like, dude, I love Theo Vaughn. And he stuck that little hand out, yeah. that little fist, and he goes, gang, and we fist bumped it. Yeah. And, man, I got to tell you, that made my entire day. So I just wanted to let you know you're affecting people everywhere from uh, from Covington to Houston. So uh, keep it up, man. Gang, Kevin, thank you, man. Thanks for sharing that, dude. That's awesome. And if that guy hasn't paid his bill yet, man, will you please call into the hotline? I'm going to uh, see if we can't pay that pest control, man. Because you know that dude, has he probably... He's infested with the dark arts, baby. If he's got that, the, if he's got that tour shirt sitting there, um, I'm gonna tell you about this, man. Fiverr. If you haven't used this, this is a very good thing to use. If you had an extra eighth day of the week, what would you do? You know, I'd probably do some spray painting or something, some light graffiti. I would organize things. I'd find the smell in my truck that smelled like a banana. I'd get a new logo for this past weekend and help us design some t-shirts. I would do different things like that. Um, and I find more. I find ways to be more a part of other people's lives. Well, if you're a business owner, you probably know exactly what you'd do with an extra day each week. Maybe you'd launch a new website, spend more time on marketing with your services, or find new, more creative ways to build your brand. But you don't need an extra day. What you really need is Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. Your one-stop shop for world-class freelance talent. Uh, Ari Manis, uh, who's been my opener on the road, he uses Fiverr a lot. He's We've used Fiverr to hire people to help with different things. With Fiverr, all the freelancers you could ever need are right at your fingertips. If you wonder who can do this, who in my area, you don't have to always add, you know, uh, post on Facebook, does anybody know anybody that could build a, um, a retaining wall? Go to Fiverr. That's right. Fiverr's global network of on-demand freelance talent is here. Whether you're launching your first business, scaling your current business, or in need of extra support. From graphic design, copywriting, marketing, web, web programming, film editing, scoring music, and more. So actually, Fiverr is more centered on the uh, electronical side, the digital side. You need somebody to help you put some music together. You've written a song. You need somebody to help you track it. You have a website idea, an app, an app idea. You need a consultant. You need someone who can help you get the right infrastructure going on for your business. That's through Fiverr. 24-7 customer service. Reach out with questions anytime, anywhere. Check out Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com and receive 10% off your first order by using our code Theo. Find all the digital services in one place at F-I-V-E-R-R.com slash Theo. That's fiverr.com slash theo thank you for supporting the podcast you know many americans uh struggle with insurance purchasing and i'm one of them you know i purchased some insurance and i'm changing it now saving some money i am i'm gonna save almost a thousand dollars over the next year and that's good yep and one of your biggest purchases of the year is insurance and who can help you save the zebra the Zebra is the nation's leading insurance comparison site for car and home insurance. That's it. In minutes, you can compare policies from every major provider for free, 
all on one independent marketplace. After a few quick questions, the Zebra pairs people with the right insurance company for them, helping everyone save time and money. Yep. Best of all, the Zebra has no stake in the policy you choose. Nope. They have no stake in it. They don't get any backhanded deal. They're just helping you out. After a few quick questions, the Zebra pairs people with the right insurance company for them, helping you save time and money. Visit thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O to get your free quote today. That's T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash Theo. Thezebra.com slash Theo. Make sure there isn't some insurance savings out there for you. You know what? Let's hit a win that came out today. Let's hit a win. We want to get some wins on the board, man. And uh, and let's hear one right here. Here we go. Howdy, man. Uh, this is a little cross between a, a big, big win and a little bit of tip, tip for you. You know, you're talking about how you, you're thinking about settling down and be getting something going. And what worked for me, man, I was throughout my twenties and like my you know late teens and all that. I was partying, living for the weekend. Didn't even realize it. Just kind of, and I wasn't. I wasn't finding the meaning, you know. I thought I would find it there, and and I was, and I, well, what happened for me was I was getting lots of girls, but not the girl. The girl would always be. Uh, I just couldn't get her. She would never be interested in me the way I would look, like obsessed with her. I'd fall in love with these girls, and they'd never go for me. I'm a good-looking guy, man. Trust me over the phone, but trust me, I, I got all these other girls who I didn't really respect. You sound decent. As much, and it was just like no homo either, brother. Praise God, happy pride, but also in H. I think I, you get what you put in. You get in what you put out. And so I, I changed my ways. I, I actually found Christ. Uh, and I came to know him more. I cleaned my act up, act up. And what do you know? Like, the exact girl I dreamed up fell in my, into my lap, man. My life's been so amazing ever since we are married now. We're talking about kids. And, oh, man, I pray for you, man. I pray that you get the happiness that uh, I get experience. And Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I mean, look, if you if you even look at the first chapter of the Lord's uh, novella, if you look at that first chapter, he, you know, he had a, a he, two people blind dated a damn Olive Garden, dude, in the Olive Garden of Eden, baby. Two people, he BD'd them. He blind dated them right there, damn. Lady orders apples right out of the gate and shit goes haywire. And somebody, damn, and there's a snake on the premises, you know, and they got to call damn pest control and. You know, and the two guys end up realizing they're Theo Vaughn fans there. But, um, but no, I appreciate it, man. You know, and, and, uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, it's funny. I, I want different things in my life, and, but it's, I'm all so comfortable. And man, we may, it's, it's, it all makes things so comfortable these days. You know, it's just like a damn people just serve in comfort caves. And I'm just sitting there. I'm just sitting here by, you know, between two boulders with a, with a, with a book of matches. You know, we make it so comfortable. Each person separate, comfortable, sedate. Oh, you got a sexual feeling? Jerk out. Sp you know, bust out. Oh, you got this? Go, don't worry. Here's this. You got a headache? You got a tickle? Are you ticklish? I saw a pill yesterday online. Are you ticklish? Then get this pill. You shouldn't have to live that way. What? What way shouldn't you have to live? In laughter? It is a battle. It is a war. But I appreciate you, man. You're right. And it takes effort and it takes adjustment. Nothing changes if nothing changes. You know, we'll, we do what we can here. And, um, and, and uh, uh, you know, let's keep it moving here. And let's, 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 let's uh, you know, keep the light where it is. And that's moving forward in front of us. Um, if you're struggling out there, man, know that I love you, you know, and know that you are loved. And sometimes people are reaching for you and you got to, you got to. You got to put your hand out. You know, you don't, you don't have to meet them halfway, but sometimes you got to meet them at least 5% of way, you know, and you can do it. You can do it, man. Um, 
thank you guys for being a part of my life. And uh, and, and I want to say, you know, we do what we can here to, to be a, a, po a positive thing in the world. And we got a single mom uh, nomination that came in right here. Let's get to it. Hey, Theo, it's Alec here, South Mississippi. Man, I have a single mother I'd like to select. Her name is Janae Savedra. She just went through her second round of chemo, I believe. She's mm. battling cancer. She has a sweet little boy, man, and she's sweet herself, and she's just been heavy on my heart and my mind. So I thought, why not submit a video? Man, if you're seeing this, love you, brother. Thanks for all you do. Love the show. Gang, gang, baby. Gang, baby, there you go. And that man is up there. You can see that man does, uh, he got a hard hat on. He might be a damn, I mean, he could be a coal miner doing a, Hell, he could be doing, doing an industrial microwave. He could do an industrial sized microwave. That could that dude could be have a boat or and be cooking up the damn biggest uh tostito pizza roll you've ever seen. You know, you just don't know what a lot of these people are doing nowadays. But let's see if we can't get Janae on the line here, man. And yeah, thanks for the submission and for brightening it up my day, man. As always, you can submit things through Theovon.com. Um, videos for us to talk about, to discuss, things you've recorded, um, single mom nominations, uh, questions you want to have possibly on the show, anything like that. Hello? Hey, Janae? Hey. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey, um... My name's Theo. I just work on a podcast, um, and we do a thing where some of our listeners sometimes will call in, um, and they want to suggest like a single mom that they know who is who, just who they really admire. So we had a guy named Alec call in, and I don't know if he works at like a carnival or he might do like railroad work or something, but he um, he. Uh, nominated you and so we just wanted to send you a thousand dollars to do something fun with your kiddo um, that's and awesome thank you so much oh, really you're very welcome um, you said w what have you been up to what's going on with you right now in your world um, currently um, I'm at home I was diagnosed with uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma no um, is it hard is it scary it was scary. It was, well, the way I kind of found out about it was by accident. Um, so at that point it was stage two. So it wasn't, wasn't as bad as what it could have been, but, um, but I've been going through chemotherapy and, um, May 7th is when I had my last, um, PET scan. And mm -hmm. so that will show kind of how much cancer is still there, if there's any there. And the scan showed that there was nothing there, Yeah. but I still have to go through uh, treatment though. And then, um, also, when I found out that I had cancer, um, found out that I have Bell's palsy too. So I don't know if you can tell, like the right side of my face is just temporarily paralyzed. Mm -hmm. um, there really is no telling when that will self-correct itself. But um, but yeah, since March, I've just been kind of staying um, at home and I haven't really been able to work because my uh, my white cell count is really low and I'm more susceptible to Dang. you know get easier so i'm more at risk especially with covid and all that stuff uh they want me to stay at home and how are you able to stay positive during this like what's what's some of that been like if you don't mind sharing some of that i don't know well i have a really awesome um group of people my yeah. family um they have been you know the people that help me get through each and every day um and it's been a, a blessing really to have those people in my life without really? them i couldn't have gotten as far as i am now for sure. Wow. Yeah. What is that like? Like, how much does that influence you know or affect you? You feel like, like, what is, like, what are some things that people do that that really kind of let you know that you have support? Um. You know, I've had people text me. Um. You know, that single mom. Like, I have my son Brent. You know, does Brent need anything? Do you need me to pick him up from school? Do you need to, you know, make dinner for you? Or is there anything that I can do that can help? You know, your day to day. Um, that's been a really, you know, big help in my life is just knowing that I have people out there that are willing to take time out of their day to help me. Yeah, yeah, it's big. It's so important. People just knowing that other people care about them. You know, right? Exactly. It's a big thing. Um, my friend had Bell's palsy, dude. Actually, it was pretty. Really? Yeah. I mean, not to say it was cool, but I always kind of admired it. I like things that are a little different. So yeah, he. Uh, I don't I don't think it's cool. I'm so over it. It's been like three months, but really, what does it feel like? Can you whistle? No, I can't whistle. I can't. Oh. I really. Can't. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Um, I can barely drink through a straw. Like it's just, 
I don't know. It's weird. Does it feel like, does it almost feel like when you're at the dentist actually and they kind of yeah. give you that stuff? Wow. It does. Yeah, it does. Um, sometimes though, like if I use that muscle a lot, it'll kind of tingle a little bit. Like it feels like it's it's wanting to do something, but it, it just can't. I don't mm. know. It's, it's really weird. I've never had that feeling before. Oh, yeah. I've definitely, uh, I've definitely wanted to do things, but not been able to do them. But, um, dang. Uh, so what about your son? So he goes to school? Yeah. Well, right now he's, uh, he's in like pre-K. He goes to daycare, but he'll, he'll start kindergarten, um, in the fall. Oh, uh, pre-K is pretty easy, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's doing good. Is he? Yeah. He's doing real well. Oh, that's nice. Um, well, uh yeah we just wanted to say hey and let you know we we just want to be a part of uh something positive in your day today and your friend alec really cares about you and uh and yeah we're just going to be cheering you on and when do you get that next uh pet scan that i'm not sure um we're kind of just doing it um by ear we're just playing it by ear right now so i'll go back to the oncologist next tuesday and depending on um how my blood level looks and my blood work looks um, it'll determine whether or not they will continue with treatment or not. Um, but my oncologist has to make that call. But once I'm done with the chemo treatments, they mm -hmm. tell me I have treatments left. Um, and then I'll get another scan, but we'll, we'll just have to see. So mm. it could be, it could be soon. I don't know. I don't That's know. cool. They got them dogs now that can smell cancer. They said, but I don't know if I trust them. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know? I don't know about that. Yeah, you could just have a damn beef jerky in your pocket, and next thing you know, you test positive, you know? Well, I have cats, too, so they could probably smell the cat and the mistake oh. is for, you know, the cat, but... Yeah, next thing you know, you're in treatment, and it's just because you're a pet owner, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, that seems like a little bit unnecessary, but... Well, look, when that bells wears off, you send us a picture of you with a full smile. How about that? Awesome, I sure will. Thank you so much. Oh, you bet, and go do something fun with Brent, and um, and you have a good day. We love you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. And there you go right there. You know, nice to see a young lady staying so positive, man. That's the thing. You know, that lady, she's out there. She got, she can't even do a full smile for her kid right now. Part of her face is taking, a, you know, the summer off or whatever. And she's got to do, you know, she's just getting it done. And that's pretty positive. Thank you guys for being here with me today. You know what I'm saying. I'm upstairs. If you need me, baby, you know where I'll be. You know, I'm going to be just keeping on going on. You know, I did some treadmilling earlier and I saw a damn bluebird this morning. So I know the Lord's got my back, baby, and I'm out there. And I'm out there, baby, you know that. And I'm about to roll my quads out with a quad roller. And really, I got them jostles up in my damn thighs make me damn, I just feel so damn thotty, you know, I, God, but uh, thank you everybody for being a part of uh, this episode. I want to thank our, uh, our sponsor, Liquid Death. I want to thank you. Um, you know, we'll make sure that we have episodes coming up. Even if I am out of town, we're going to make some this weekend uh, with some neat guests. Uh, really excited about it and uh yeah that's all you know be good to yourself um you know you deserve it uh and be good to each other man we try god I'm, i want to you know i get in a place where i just gotten angry sometimes and i want to just be better i want to be better at it so and i don't think i'm being hard on myself i want to this is it this is the rodeo dog you know and I want to freaking know the whole cattle. You know that. Uh, we had this. This uh, There's a gentleman, Akira the Don. And he's a music man. And uh, he made this. He, he took a piece of a podcast and has made some uh, different, different things. And one of them is uh, this right there called I Can't Make You Like Me. And, um, and it's from pieces of old uh, from this past weekend. And. And thank you to everybody. Uh, thank you to those two fellows that met up in a, in a pest-infested living room to fist bump. Uh, thank you to everybody that's ever, you know, been to a hot tub and seen somebody who was pretending to be a child but was probably an adult, you know, masturbate out into the water. You know, thank you to everybody who loves people. And if it's hard for you to love, man, I, I know how you feel. Um... And just know that you're not alone, baby. 
Gang, we got this. We started riding my bike to school. I'd ride my bike maybe five miles to school. Five miles to school. When I was in middle school, 